a unique mechanism of delivering radiation treatments completely different from linear accelerator based treatments, um, what I've seen in my experience with homotherapy is its ability to dose modulate but, uh, in a way that far exceeds what I've seen with conventional IMRT, either with sliding window or step and shoot. Um, the ability to dose modulate and dose escalate in prostate cancers and head and neck cancers is far exceeds what, what I've seen in the past. Um, I can honestly say that I, I had been a naysayer of tomotherapy until I had experience in using it. Uh, I think that was something that uh, you know was born into previous facilities that I had previously worked. Um, that there was some criticisms on the reliability and the um, techniques of tomotherapy to deliver similar or same treatments that were delivered using conventional linear accelerators, um, particularly in prostate cancer. And what we've seen is that the conformality around the prostate and definitive treatments is, is far exceeds what we see with linear accelerators, including treatments delivered at major academic centers. In my practice, we have used tomotherapy to treat our definitive prostate cancers, our definitive head and neck cancers, uh, lung cancers, certainly retreatments of various cancers throughout the body, um, and in addition, and maybe even more importantly, uh, retreatments on patients who had previously received radiation who may or may not have been able to be retreated again just by virtue of the ability to modulate the doses to the extent that we can, we've been able to deliver significant tumor dose while limiting doses to critical structures that may be a few millimeters from our target, which was inconceivable using standard learning accelerators in the past. What we've seen in the last five years in radiation oncology is a change in paradigm. We're moving towards um, hypofractionated treatments where patients are receiving much higher doses to smaller volumes or to more confined volumes uh, with, high, with better technology. And that is a byproduct of the advancements that have been made in radiation oncology. The tomotherapy unit kind of serves as a model of that. It has every component we can think of to facilitate hypofractionated treatments, and that includes the image guidance pers uh, portion of it, in addition, treatment delivery, um, the ability to create 3D CT images and to target structures visually by seeing and evaluating the soft tissue and bony components of a tumor in nearby structures is invaluable. The ability to deliver radiation treatments to such a small volume with such conformal treatments is also something that has facilitated that. Um, we are seeing more and more patients who qualify and would benefit from hypofractionated treatments that could be delivered within a period of a week that in previous situations would have been treated over five to six weeks, obviously, that uh, improves uh, quality of life issues and may, in some cancers, improve on control rates as well. Um, we are seeing uh, several patients with, uh, who are coming in for consultations who may not have previously um, looking for treatments for tomotherapy. Um, we see that in our prostate cancer patients. Um, we see it in some lung cancer patients and in brain tumor can uh, patients as well. We're seeing patients who come in with a clipped uh, article on tomotherapy um, who are interested in seeking this technology out. And, you know, I think they come for one particular reason, which is conformal treatments. They want less dose to their critical structures nearby. They want uh, equal or better cure rates. And, you know, we can provide a very conformal treatment um, using tomotherapy with accuracy and targeting, obviously, from the uh, adaptive uh, image-guided perspective. Mm -hmm. My, my first few perceptions on tomotherapy have been skewed by previous institutions I had previously worked. Um, one in particular and one of the biggest complaints about tomotherapy that I've heard from people had been on reliability and downtime. And our, 
our downtime has been so minimal that, and the reliability has been so so great that uh, I can kind of discount that. Our our uptime has been uh, 99 plus percent, and um, has really been our workhorse in our in our facility. The integration of tomotherapy into a facility that had primarily used linear accelerators for treatment delivery was surprisingly seamless. Um, the, the therapists involved in, in treatment delivery and treatment planning and simulation uh, perspective, as well as our physicists, um, have adopted tomotherapy fairly rapidly and uh, developed a level of ex expertise in it fairly quickly as well. Um, the time from patients being decided to be treated with tomotherapy to the time that they're on treatment can conceivably be, be within 24 hours and in fact in many of our stereotactic patients where we need to start patients right away we've been able to do so. Treatment planning times have significantly reduced even in the more complex situations by virtue of one fact which is there are less iterations that need to be done to achieve constraints that we've set forth on these treatment plans and I think that has significantly reduced the amount of time spent on each treatment plan. It's gotten to a point where our dosimetrists and physicists um, would prefer to plan on tomotherapy because the treatment times are, I'm sorry, the planning time is significantly reduced and they just find it much less of a hassle because they have to come back to us with less plans and less treatment plans that we have to criticize because they're able to achieve our dose criteria and our constraints uh, pretty rapidly.